Here lies our third session right now. We're going to speak with Colorado, Oregon State, and USC. Um, so let's start it off with Colorado, um, who is represented by Coach J.R. Payne, um, who adds six newcomers this season. One familiar face, though, returning is the stud all-freshman point guard, super fast, big-time playmaker, and Jalen Sherrod. Um, hi, JR. Hey, Jalen. What's up with you guys? Hey. Hey, hey how y'all doing? Um, Jalen, I'm going to start with you. Um, you. You know how I would be at the games. We would speak after. In many ways, I feel like Colorado goes last season as you went. Um, and you picked up a lot of experience. It's a tough learning curve at a point guard position in a tough conference like Pac-12. What do you take from that experience and how does that inform the way you view your leadership role on the team this season? I basically would say I've taken, I've taken that experience and just allowed it to be more of learning lessons and, and being able to now be in a position to help others on the team and grow in my leadership in the sense of being more vocal and um, knowing more offensively and defensively. So just like being able to be more vocal on the court, um, out, outside of basketball, talking to my teammates all the time, just growing relationships around. Cause I think last year I struggled um, with relationships more so than anything. So just growing relationships on the team and all around and just being able to be vocal and express feelings on the court, off the court with teammates and stuff like that. Did handling COVID-19, all of the Zoom calls and all that in a weird way, did it bring you guys closer? You mentioned, you know, having a tough time building those relationships or was that even harder to overcome? Um, I would say COVID definitely brought challenges, but I think this year this team is closer than we ever have been before. Um, outside of just me too, I think this, this team, we're just, overall sisterhood in a way where we can just communicate and have fun with each other no matter what it is and so I think the zoom calls turned into dancing sessions and just stuff like that just having fun with it um and just knowing that it is a process that everyone's going through so we just have to make the best of it absolutely one thing I heard uh you changed your jersey number from one to double zero a lot of times for athletes that's transformational why and is there a significance for you um i think for me double zero it means a lot to me because i became double zero in high school on um, my junior year and so it was just that was the year where i just started to grow into myself as a player and as a person and so i thought why not go back to it as i seen i feel like i took the same type of transformations from my freshman year to my sophomore year here that I did my sophomore year to my junior year in high school. So it was just more so a message to myself. Mm. That's nice. We'll see how that translates that, that message to yourself onto the court. Uh, thank you, Jayla. I wanna take this moment to get uh, everybody in. We're gonna move along to Oregon State right now, um, who's represented by, the 20, by a 2020 Naismith Coach of the Year semifinalist and Coach Scott Ruick. Uh, hey, Coach Ruick. And senior Leah Goodman is here as well. Um, currently first from the Beavers all-time career three-point percentage and fourth all-time for threes made. Um, also this year's Oregon State squad enters the preseason as according to the AP preseason poll, ranked number 18 in the nation. Um, how are you guys? Hi, Scott. Hi, Hi Leah. What's going on, guys? Hi. Hi. I'm good. How are you? Good to see you. I'm well. I'm happy to see you. This is a good sign. This is a great thing. <laughs> um, you know, Aaliyah, one of the things like besides being known for being able to hit threes, being not afraid of any defensive assignment, you were really instrumental um, this long off season in coordinating yourself and other women's basketball players throughout the entire conference around causes of social and racial justice. Um, just what were you guys trying to accomplish? What are the goals and the initiatives of what you guys are doing within the conference? Yeah, so uh, we had a meeting, uh, myself and then fellow um, teammate Taya Corsdale had a meeting with um, Coach Ruick, kind of trying to figure out what we wanted to do as a team. And I just brought up the idea of doing something as a conference as a whole. I felt it would be much more powerful 
if we came together as 12 teams um, rather than going as individual teams. Um, so yeah, I just felt like that message would come across much more powerful. Uh, it would show unity in one of the toughest, most competitive conferences. So if I know that if us um, 12 teams can come together and really be unified in this and create such a strong, powerful message, it can really be a, really make a difference. Absolutely. There's so much power in collaboration. And I'm just proud that, you know, you thought of an idea and executed it and took every, you guys now took each other, um, you know, together to make this, this, this happen. Um, as far as the team this season, you know, last year, you guys are anchored around Michaela Pivik, Destiny Slocum. So you've got some really like guard perimeter oriented players. This year, headlining the preseason all Pac-12 team, it's yourself and kind of two young bigs, you know, you've got Kennedy Brown, you've got Taylor Jones. How, how might that shift um, the way you guys play on the court? Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, we lost some big personalities on the court as well as off the court. But I think when filling those roles, we know it's not going to be individuals stepping up, but more of as a team coming together to fill those rebounds Mick grabbed, um, those just points all around. So, um, yeah, I think it will change our playing style a little bit, but both Taylor and Kennedy, they just grab so much attention uh, on the inside that it opens up a lot on the outside. And I mean, Coach Ruick talks about it a lot. We have 12 solid three-point shooters. Um, so I mean, that's tough to guard, um, yeah. but I'm extremely excited. We're young, but this, this team just has a different type of maturity about them. Uh, so it's, I'm really excited. I have the opportunity to lead them and it's just, I can't wait for this year to get started. Yeah, me too. And that's the thing about you guys, you can play, you usually can play inside and out. Uh, so this doesn't look like it's going to be that different. <laughs> um, let's move along as well to get in USC here. Um, we have coach Mark Track, who is leading a traditional senior list squad <laughs> and also comes in with the uh, reigning Pac-12 freshman of the year and Alyssa Peely. What's up, Alyssa? Hey, Coach Rack. Hi, Raz. How are you? Hello. Hey. Um, Alyssa, last year you were freshman of the year um, and you impressed everybody with your strength, with your mobility, with your agility. This season, there won't be a secret. You know, everybody's going to be aware and ready. What have you added to your game since your freshman of the year campaign? Um, I think just working more on my perimeter game, getting my three ball and getting my percentage up to what I want it to be, because last year it wasn't um, that great. But um, I think, yeah, just sharpening my outside skills and just so that I'm more of a threat out there, too, um, than I am inside the paint, too. So, yeah. If there's one thing I remember about last season, even though you were a freshman, you didn't back down from any challenge. You welcomed the accountability of being the go-to. I can remember you guys for that first win of the Pac-12 tournament uh, at the end of the season. And just the joy and, and happiness you guys for each, had for each other. What, how do you want to build on that for this season? What do you think is possible from that end of season great moment? Um, yeah, I think last year overall was just a huge culture change for all of us. And we really like harped on the um, culture part of our team, just changing the culture and all that. So I think um, like that really built up at the end of the season. And, um, you know, we're just all of us returners are trying to um, just teach our new players like what our culture is and, you know, just how we're coming together as one as a family so what is your culture um family pretty much like personally I'm a big family person I've always been taught family first so um I think that's something I bring to our team just um pretty much like bringing our team together and um telling these girls that we're a family we're gonna fight together you know we go to war together and um you know, and once we got that chemistry and that that bond, then it will show on the court too. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Uh, for this last question, I'm gonna open it up to anybody, but I am gonna give a special, uh, I'm gonna throw it to Aaliyah first, just cause we do have an upperclassman in the room here. Um, 
My last question is, given how much ambiguity there was this coming into the season and understanding how quickly the game was taken away from us last season, what does it mean to you to be able to step into the season, to see it at least started and play it? Aaliyah? Yeah, I think we're just extremely grateful. I know there's a lot of athletes out there that their seasons are being canceled. Um, they're still unknown with majority of seasons for um, athletes. So I think we're just extremely grateful that we have the opportunity to play and then just continue to live kind of day by day. It's been hard. It, there's a lot of unknown throughout this whole um, time, starting back with the end of last season. So just kind of living, living each day um, as we go and just making the best of it. I think that's something that um, Coach Rook has really done a great job of expressing our to our team is, hey, we're just going to go with the flow, um, control what we can control, and then just let everyone do the rest with the things that are out of our control. Alyssa, Jalen, do you have something to sh share on that one? Uh, yeah, I'll just say, uh, I think we've taken a lot of pride in knowing that we don't have the future basically to bank on or know what can happen tomorrow, just like Aaliyah said. So just taking a lot of pride in the game and taking every day as a blessing is pretty much all we can do and know that things can fluctuate and change on any level. So you just have to be prepared for whatever it might, whatever might come our way this season. Alyssa, you mentioned the culture shift um, and to family. Um, when you don't know what's coming next and there's a lot of account, there's a lot of ambiguity, sometimes, especially for kind of younger squads, it's hard to be accountable. How are you guys holding each other accountable? Um, I think our coaches have done a really good job, but um, with a situation like this, I don't think um, that's really enough to keep us going into that what's going to make us successful for this season um I think over the time we had off um you know we were all on our own so you know we just kind of have to have that self-accountability and um you know we talk as a team have meetings and everything just you know really having that conversation of what are you doing to um like come back in the best shape you can and just to be prepared overall